Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And today, for this Monday Mini, we thought it would be fun if we did a sminty, a very brief sminty review of the film Hocus Pocus 2. (laughs) 2. Yes, which just came out on September 30th of 2022. Uh, And we've already done a feminist movie Friday on Hocus Pocus and our love for it. So if you want to check that out, then please do. Uh, But yes, that said, this is going to have spoilers in it. Honestly, this is one of those movies where I think you could be spoiled and you could still watch it and not really understand what's going on. Um, <laughs> so I say that That's in a loving way, interesting I way to introduce it. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I say it as like, it's kind of, I guess we could spoil it, but I still think you'd see it and not really anticipate something. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. If you want to go in completely surprised as I did, then come back to this one. At a later date, it's on Disney Plus now, not a current sponsor, but has been a sponsor in the past. But yeah, we just wanted to talk about it because we're fans. We've talked about it before. It's, it's Halloween and witches. Hello. It's Halloween and witches. And I just felt like we, we could have a quick conversation on it. Um, so funnily enough, I watched this the day it came out. And with some of my friends who have loved Hocus Pocus and we've watched it from like kids... Uh, together. And one of my friends, my good friend Marissa, who has been on the show, listens to the show, um, when she arrived, she was like, oh, no, we don't need to watch it. I've already seen it. And the way she said it, I was like, oh, must not be good. (laughs) But I was kind of like, oh, I thought the whole point of this hanging out session was we were going to like drink cider and carve pumpkins and watch Hocus Pocus. And she's like, no need. (laughs) Just kidding. She she realized later when I was like, look, I'm going to watch Hocus Pocus. Um... It was at the end of the night, and she was going to bed. And I was like, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to stay up and watch it because I haven't seen it, and I really want to see it. And she was like, oh, you meant the second one. And I was like, of course I meant the second one. (laughs) To be fair, I think I'm about to do a movie watching party with Caroline, old host. Yes. Uh Uh Hocus Pocus, the original, which I did have to ask when she mentioned, I was like, one or two um, on their projector. So, you know, it's not so... You, know. you need to clarify these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just assumed she was in the loop. Because to me, like, my whole Friday was like, oh, it's folks too. <laughs> right. I didn't know when it was coming out either, though. So I might have so been confused. So when did you watch it? So I watched it this week. Uh, mm. So today is the 6th of October. Mm-hmm. So it's been out for almost a week now. A full week now. Yeah. Yeah, almost a week. Uh, I think I watched it. Was it yesterday? Did I watch it yesterday? I may have I watched it or the night before. <laughs> Y'all, all the days are coming through. But either mm-hmm. I watched it either the 5th or the 4th. So, mm-hmm. But I knew we were doing this episode. I may have waited later had I not. Oh, man. I was a media. I was like, I've got to see this. I was trepidatious. And I have to say, watching it with some friends of mine that I've had for so long, they were both like, I didn't want to see it because I didn't want it to ruin my... Childhood Memories of Hocus Pocus, which I didn't have it to that level. I was like, and this is kind of, let's give our short reviews. Okay, so I was like, you know, I love the original Hocus Pocus so much it got banned from my house, okay? (laughs) But it was not, like I can admit, there are a lot of plot holes and there's a lot of nostalgia involved of me liking it. I think it's a super fun movie. I watch it every Halloween but I wouldn't tell you, like, oh, this is a masterpiece. I just think it's really fun, and I like it a lot. I would say with this one, it was kind of the same, where I really enjoyed it. I liked that it had a really strong message of friendship between women, of the sisterhood between women. But if you start to pick up part that plot, you're not going to be in a good place. <laughs> so just leave it be <laughs> and enjoy it. I think I saw, like, this headline trending the day after from The Guardian or The Insider, where it was like, this is a bewildering movie. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, and I've actually seen it twice now, because the first time I think I was so wrapped up in kind of chatting with my friends about it that I missed some things. And the second time I was like, oh, okay. It didn't really 
It clarified things some, but not too much, <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> so what is your your quick review, Samantha? So I came in here with no expectations. I honestly mm-hmm. had no thought of like, this is going to ruin something. It was just not going to make... Because uh, between all of the witches movie, I do like Hocus Pocus, but I like the witches better, mm-hmm. which is the scary yeah. one with Angelica Houston. That was the one that like I really loved. Uh, that was a little older, so I would have... But I'm like, okay, yeah. Uh, so I did like this movie, and I really mm-hmm. liked the musicals, but I think I liked the other one a little more because it was a little more mm-hmm. haunting and scarier, even though stuff like that usually now is like a little harder for me. I would have been like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> but uh, so in my mind, coming in it, I wasn't really scared or trepidatious about it. I was like, okay, let's watch it. And I thought it was sweet. I thought everything worked in that it's a completely new tale at this point. I love that the three uh, originals, Sarah Jessica Parker, Bette Miller, and uh, Kathy Najimy were back into this, and they seem to do really well. I love Bette Miller. I loved her growing up. Um, I loved her in Big Business, which goes back way back when. Uh, mm-hmm. So seeing her in this movie was fantastic, and I'm really glad that they came back on. I felt like they were the same roles again. Like, it was beautiful. I thought the makeup was done wonderfully. The kid Mm -hmm. actors did a great job. I was very excited about that. I liked the new plot where it was friends instead of a boy and a girl chasing after each other. I I really appreciated that. And then the loss of friendship when you go into high school. All of that just spoke to me. I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So, for me, I thought it was a good movie. Will I watch it again? Is it going to be like, no. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Do I think that it should continue? That would be hard since the three witches disappeared into the ether. I guess ozone of the world. Sad. I don't. I don't like, know. Oh. Um, so all of those things would be my commentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, there was a lot of uh, willing suspension of disbelief. Yes, for me, but I thought mm-hmm. it was great, and I thought the actors did a good job. Yeah, and I. One of my friends, after it was done, she said they looked like they have so much fun. I was like, yeah, yeah. they really did, and I liked that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fantastic, and I hope it is. I hope it was a fun experience, because I that if I found out anything different, I think it would ruin it, because yeah. that's what I want to think about it. Yeah, and it was funny, because I watched the second one, and then I went back and watched the first one, then I watched the second one again, and I didn't realize, like... At the end of the first one, you have your whole, uh, you know, you would die to save your sister. Uh, like, Bette Midler's character, Winifred, is like, you would die to save your sister, you fool. And in this one, she's like, oh, you know, power is nothing without my sisters. So that was kind of a nice yeah, little circle of her coming to realize, oh, the sisterhood is so powerful, and I'd rather have that than power. Um and there was the whole, you know, power is meant to be shared. There was the whole plot line of like, oh, we're moving into high school. Some of us are interested in boys. We're, you know, kind of drifting apart in this way. But then coming back together and, and sharing that power. So I did. I, I think, as you said, I, before we started recording, I I enjoyed it. I think if I was a kid, I would have loved it. Right. And I thought that's yeah. exactly the same with Hocus Pocus. Exactly. Because I was asking my partner if they wanted to watch with me. And they're like, eh, whatever. whatever. I, don't think, I think it's going to be cheesy. And I'm like, sure. But the first one was cheesy. But exactly. But we, we just love it so much because mm-hmm. it was endearing. Like, there's so many things to it when you have a childhood memory. Same thing for, uh, I know people feel the same way about Princess Bride, or yeah. uh, which I just recently watched because it's the 35th anniversary. I'm like, we need to bring this in an episode. And there's no way we can bring it to it as, as an episode other than I loved it as a kid. Um, <laughs> but like stuff like that, like you yeah. have a heart for it and it's something you watched as a kid and therefore you will always love it because you watched it as a kid. And of Green Gables, we know that I, I will always love it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Hocus Pocus is right there in that it, it really spoke to us. And yes, I think it was geared towards kids and then mm-hmm. the founding audience, the beginning audience. No in between. You can't come in as an adult never watching it and think that this is going to be a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that was that's a good way to look at it. Like, I do... It kind of annoys me when adults go into a movie that is definitely for kids and they're like... Bah, 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 and like... Mm. Uh, <laughs> You can have your critiques, but calm down. It's right, right. <laughs> not not necessarily for you, and especially if nostalgia is involved and like, but the original is this. I'm like, it's okay, calm down. <laughs> 
I did think it was funny. Uh, one, there's immediate singing. Immediate. <laughs> As it should. I like they were like, oh, they like singing and they just leaned in. I did enjoy that they kind of tried to address the... It's, it sounds so silly talking about this with Hocus Pocus, but like ageism, where uh, they comment on, oh, you know, is this just a patriarchal idea of, of how women should look? And then the younger generation takes the the witches to a Walgreens, which must have paid a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> for this <laughs> sponsorship. But it's like, here's our aging, anti-aging creams. It's got the souls of children in it. Like... Kind of that commentary was interesting to see. Um, but I I mean, I, really at the heart of it was the sisterhood bit and, and seeing, seeing that be the heart of it was really rewarding. Because I think when people quote Hocus Pocus, and there were definitely some lines in Hocus Pocus 2 that I was like, oh, I'm going to quote this later. Like, this is very, <laughs> very ridiculous and funny, and I like it. Are kind of, you know, the, the sisters joking around or messing with each other or, uh, I don't know. It's just something fun to see their relationship play out. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the best part of it. All right. I will say the child actors that were supposed to portray uh, the sisters, um, they did a great job. They really yeah. tried to put on the mannerisms really well. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. okay, they're really trying. Um mm-hmm. I, I love the I love that friendship bit. I really again, like I said, that's the first thing I was like, oh, this is nice. This is nice to see, like the healing of the relationships, and it's not about boys necessarily, except for the one not too smart boy mm-hmm. who couldn't figure out that he was insulting people because he was making fun of them for mm-hmm. being weird, as he likes to say. Mm-hmm. And I did I like that. It was pretty much centered completely on ladies, and it's written by a woman. It was directed by a woman. Like, everything was very, very uh, central to women in itself. It even did the tongue-in-cheek about that many drag shows have the Sanderson sisters yes, as a thing. It's like, yeah, as in fact, I have many of friends who love dressing drag to that. Um, and yeah, mine as well. It'll, but I love that it just yeah. gets on top of that. And I think they know they know what it's about. They know what yeah. is happening. Like, they play to that. Again, this is for the fans who've been mm-hmm. here for the last 30 years and the newbies coming in trying to figure it out and we'll have a newer uh, trend coming on. I hope so. I would hope to see this costume because the costumes are fantastic. Yes, I did love, as you know I would, the costume contest scene. Yeah. It was so funny. I love, like, all of the different, because I was like, oh, yeah, you always have the group that tries to do it this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. <laughs> I love it. And I love when Winifred said, like, we're going to win whatever this is, like, because they have no idea what it is. <laughs> and then they lose. I and then they lose. It. <laughs> it is. It's good. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was very, I thought, again, I, I love, I'm a sucker for friendships where yeah. it's like, yeah, this is real. This is not necessarily that like you get together and everything works out and witchcraft happens. You know, one mm-hmm. of you becomes a witch. I would have loved that to become the witch, I guess. But in having like the understanding of growing up and what does this look like? And then that it's that's the center of the focus. We don't have enough and I love to see it. I know. It was it was really nice. And it, it was, as I was watching it, like I said, I was like, oh gosh, I would have loved this as a kid. Like to have this... Um, representation. And I thought like even if, you know, some of the plot points weren't quite there, the scene at the end was very moving um, when Winifred is like having her moment of, oh, it's nothing yeah. without my sisters. Yeah. Um, that was pretty. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was very, very sweet. Um, and then just like a brief mention, because I do think it's sort of interesting when children's movies deal with this. There was this whole like especially in the beginning, kind of Salem witch trials vibe and a really strong Puritan religion vibe and the Sanderson sisters as children existing outside of that and therefore being outcast, which is, that's something we talk about with witches all the time. Um, So that was interesting. The issue of virginity, which we talked about in the original Hocus Pocus episode as it's handled in that movie, was mentioned, not really explained, <laughs> but mentioned. <laughs> I really like the explanation of never lit a candle and you're like, 
Um, not, not good. <laughs> no, not, not a good way to go, bro. Not a good explanation. <laughs> and then I thought it was funny. As we discussed in that Hocus Pocus episode, there are certain things I look back and I'm like, wow, I wonder if I understood what this meant. And one of the things was, you know, Billy being uh, Winifred's love that then cheated with Sarah. Um and in this movie, he, Billy, was like, no, we shared one kiss. She was saying the true love, that's not the true story. And Gilbert, who's the owner of the Magic Shop slash Sanderson Sister Museum, being like, oh, no, I'm going to tell your story. I'm going to correct the, uh, correct the record. But it was just interesting because I was like, huh, I, I wonder. <sighs> Seeing that in a children's movie, I'm just curious how much children understand of that or how much I understood of it. Right. Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought that was an interesting take, too, of, like, maybe it, it's not the story we've been told. <laughs> and he just wants to get the record straight. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. I know it's not, like, plot. <laughs> the this plot is an is, easy movie. If you're yeah. willing to, if you want to have a children's movie that you want to watch with your kids and kind of explain your love, this could go well. Mm-hmm. Again, some people be like, "No, this is witchcraft," which you yeah. know they fully leaning mm. to. So you know, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I'm not a parent, but I always recommend watching these kinds of movies first, and then you can kind of judge whether or not you want to show it to your kids. But um. I, the songs are really catchy, I'll tell you that. I was telling Samantha I've had them, like, I'll wake up, and it's just stuck in my head. Uh, so beware of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, also, just in closing, I thought it was very, the book, having this strong emotion. Yes. Oh, okay, you have, like, really emotional eyes, book. I, <laughs> I. <laughs> I, you're correct. Yes, you're Come right. On now. Come but it's on. communicating a lot. It does. With the eye. Yes. Um, but there are a lot of fun throwbacks. So I would recommend watching the first and second one close together because there was a lot of stuff I was like, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So that is our Sminty review, quick review of Hocus Pocus 2. Please let us know what you thought. If you watched it, you can email us at Stephanie and Mom Steph at iHeartMedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at Mom Stuff Podcast or on Instagram at Stuff Mom Never Told You. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff Mom Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 